the improved phase of the make. That is when you bring in the money. Hello, I'm Tom. Welcome to my channel, where we talk about continuous improvement in an industrial setting. And today's video, fifth in our little sort of mini series on the make, is all about the improve phase. Now, this is a very exciting phase because this is actually the first time you're really improving that process, really doing something, which effect will be felt throughout production, organization, you know, wherever you're improving a process. This is also the step that basically makes the money for the company, right? So this is the step most managers find absolutely important, and, and it is, of course. Just know that those phases that came before, they really laid down that groundwork that you need. So when you do a demaic type of improvement project, make sure you spend enough time on defining, measuring, and analyzing what you have in your process or as your problem. But then, when you are in that improved phase, the funny thing is, we sort of lose our Six Sigma toolkit here because this is more common sense or logic flowing from all that heavy lifting that you have done in that whole planning and analyzing phase of the make. So what we see is there's a couple of sort of standard tools that will be useful in many situations. We'll go over them quickly, but most of the improvements are just a really direct result of your process understanding that you got from the analysis phase. And you just need to get a countermeasure in place that attacks exactly at the root of what is causing your problem, or that makes sure that the optimal settings that you have been analyzing in your DOE really get implemented. But as promised, there's a couple of things that almost always will do a lot of good when you're in the improvement phase. And that is thinking about Kanban type of uh, control systems, right? So this is production control and inventory control. This is making sure that enough, all kinds of inventory, right, materials and, and instruments and tools and stuff like that is available at the workplace. So that is the Kanban of getting inventory to the line and also that you're not spilling all over the rest of the factory. But those type of Kanbans, they really are more for your lean flow of products through the factory, usually not you know, the, the things that really help you improve in the Demaic style. What I mean here is all those things, how do you make sure that the little materials and the tools and even the documentation and all kinds of those little things are also always replenished when needed. Get the prerequisites for good work in place and keep them in place. ECRS is sort of the workhorse of single minute exchange of data, SMAT type of reduction of resource load, reduction of time consumption. And this stands for, and I have a, a video specifically on this as well, if you want to check it out in more detail, is eliminate, combine, uh, reduce, or simplify. And what that means is when you take actions and, and little processes, can you just completely get rid of it? Can you solve it in another way so that you don't have to spend any time or effort on it? If not, can you do it together with something else? But at least combine the time and resources to get two results. Or, okay, if that's not possible, because you know, combine is sort of making it half as expensive, at least reduce how difficult it is and, and simplify that we don't do it wrong. Now, those are tools that if you're looking at reducing change over times or product changes or things like that, this is the core tool. But in many other improvements, you still want to look at all kinds of the auxiliary processes with these lenses. And then quite similar to Kanban, organize the workplace. Make sure that you don't only have the materials, but that you have them at their own correct place. Right? Every material and tool should have a place and they should be in place. They have to be at that place where you need them. And 5S is the way to organize your workplace in the most efficient way to do the process. So consider these you know, good tools in their own right, but when you do any improvement project, check if you can assist the quality of your implementation by also 
putting part of these in place there. Then on the countermeasures themselves. While I cannot give you, as I said, you know, very specific details on how to make a countermeasure because they are so situationally dependent, there is a thing that is really important to sort of realize when we are putting a countermeasure in place. And that is a hierarchy of the quality of a countermeasure, or actually the hierarchy of the countermeasure itself. And on the bottom, we have training, reminding, instructing. So when you see that people don't follow a certain way of working, we train, we remind. But honestly, that you know, that leaves so much freedom in there and so much chance for error. And you, you really build upon all kinds of different people that should all work the same, but you didn't, don't really give them the tools. It's, it's a weak form of countermeasure. This, by the way, uh, and this is not just for countermeasures in improvement projects, uh, you see this a lot also when something goes wrong, right? And then your daily meeting, people will often say, the managers especially will often say, Yes, I will talk to that operator and I will let them know that this is not the way we work. Okay, nice action. But then that is just a reminder. It's like a retraining. It is not going to stick. Second level up, checks. So we put in place checklists, uh, controls by the supervisor, data entry with a bit of feedback, stuff like that. All kinds of checks. Better effect than pure reminding, pure instruction. But, you know, we can do better. How about we go to very visual ways of instructing, visual ways of giving you the feedback at the line, right? So a visual instruction is here. If you give me an SOP with a couple of pictures in it, thank you, very happy, it's better than text, but we are here. What I mean is we don't rely on instructions anymore because, you know, you've instructed somebody once, but at the line, during the process, the process gives you visual feedback of what needs to be done. A lot of 5S and Kanban is also in this sort of way. Right? You see that there should be a palette of cartons here, and there's not. So we're going to run into problems with our assembly and packaging machine, because when the cartons are out, production will stop. So we need to do something. That too is a visual indicator. Right? It's not only these process gauges that show you what the pressure uh, of your air system or what the temperature in the oven is. No, no, it, it's also those type of things. There should be a wrench here and there is not. So my next product change is probably gonna be a problem. That way you eliminate needing to remember all of those instructions or the need to, to look up instructions during the process. Nobody's gonna do that, right? Make it easy. That is quite a good level already. Now then, a next thing is to sort of eliminate all kinds of options. Make it foolproof. Right? There is only one way of doing it right. The person still needs to do it, but there is only one way to do it correctly. So we just completely eliminate another way to put a SIM card in. Now, you know the SIM card example because we do it a lot in Polka Yoke, that, that is this one. When you make something foolproof, that doesn't mean that you cannot sort of fumble a bit with it, but you immediately know that this is not correct. But you cannot put that SIM card in the phone in a different way, but you can start like that. Right? You, you can place the SIM card the wrong way and think, oh, no, no, I have to put it here. So it's not a once and forget. It is a, a immediate signal, no, this is wrong. There's only one way that it will really fit. And we can make many of such standards and they are actually quite good. These are difficult to make for most of our processes and decisions. They are a really, really good system. Now the next level up from that is to actually eliminate the human factor totally from that a part of the process. There is no choice. There is just an automated system, set and forget. Automatic correction, that works, right? So based on just direct process logic, this may be a computer, but this can even be a certain type of guardrail or a certain type of piston that just reacts purely to one sensor being triggered or to some weight going somewhere. There's all kinds of systems 
that work independent of the operator. They just, they just work, right? You don't need to put any thought or instruction into them after you initially programmed it. And then, of course, the top level is to, is to just fully eliminate a whole process. Don't forget that this is an option. We shortly triggered it here, right? Eliminate a task. If you can eliminate the need for a whole correction process or a setting process or a whatever type of process, if you can just eliminate the need for it by finding some different workaround, nothing can go wrong with that process anymore. <laughs> it is the most stable thing you can do. Of course, this is also the most difficult because, you know, those processes were there for a reason. If they are control processes or correction processes, they were there because something else was messed up. And now you do really need to make sure that it doesn't get messed up again, because otherwise you're, you know, eliminating something that you need. But there are quite a number of things. If you really dig down in processes, we can eliminate certain steps, uh, certain motions also of a robot arm that just don't really add anything to its flight pattern, certain you know, motions, directions, or operations that a machine does to your product that are sort of, you know, maybe meant to give flexibility to do five different products. But if you don't have five different products and get rid of all the variation, eliminate things you do not need that is stronger than eliminating the human element, which by itself is stronger than just you know, making it foolproof to choose, which is stronger than having a visual indicator if you're doing things right or not, which is stronger than checking other people's work or with a checklist, which is stronger than just training, which is stronger than doing nothing, right? So this is not bad, but when you want to go to world class, you need to go up this pyramid. I hope that that inspired you to really, you know, grab that improve phase and get things organized and going and to generate a lot of cash uh, or better outcome for your company. If it did, don't forget to hit that like button. I will see you in a bit in the control video. For now, I wish you the best of luck with your process improvements. And as always, don't forget to also enjoy the continuous improvement journey.